So you have icons that, as I mentioned, going back from the very beginning, they're used for liturgical ways, teaching tools as well, but also veneration. Um, just last Sunday, going back to what I said earlier about that iconoclastic period with the seven ecumenical council, we celebrated the Sunday of Orthodoxy. All the Orthodox Church celebrates this, where we celebrate the restoration of icons. And uh, the common thing with this is that you have a procession with icons. Originally, the procession would happen in the streets, in the old city streets. People would go around the city. Again, remember a city that's kind of closed off with a wall. They would go around, sing hymns, prayers, and they would make the procession around. Again, now we do them in the churches. We might do them outside. We have a kind of a sister parish. Actually, it's an orphanage here in Africa that we're uh, that we. Uh, we're working with, and they're celebrating. See, we're doing the same thing, right? In essence, we're again with an icon. We have the same faith. We have the same belief. We we show the same thing. So again, some of the uses of icons today. And to go with that now, to conclude, we are blessed here in our community to have icons installed recently as well. So this icon here is right above you. I don't know if you saw it when you came in. I know some people on the sides may not be able to see it, but I, I put it on the slide here. We see the transformation that happens in front of us, right? Originally, icons would be painted. Really, they're say written. You know, when you write an icon, you're not painting. It's called you're you're writing. It's really you're writing the theology of what the church believes. You're putting it down, uh, not into words, but into paper. But in essence, it's the same thing. So. We had the icon installed, and this icon here of Jesus Christ is what we call the Pantocrator, in Greek means the all ruling one. You see with the dome, we started here, we put it on as a piece of canvas, and we go from there. And some more of the installation, and you see the transformation happens with the application of the prophets around. an icon of Christ upon the cross. I'm not going to read the whole thing for you, but basically the one thing to take away from this is that we have Jesus Christ. And it's, it shows that he's the judge, right? But he's the compassionate judge. He's going to judge us by the gospel. And at the same time, he's going to judge us, but he's also blessing us as well. And actually, this icon of the Pondo Crown, or this, uh, this form of it, the oldest known icon goes back to that monastery that I mentioned in Sinai with the scriptures, with the manuscript that I showed you. Ironically, again, we talked about the issues with Islam, but there's also good things that we should talk about too, that during this iconoclastic period in the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, a lot of icons were destroyed. If you saw that manuscript now going back where it showed the person kind of blotting out the image of Christ, that happened within the jurisdiction of the Roman Empire. Stuff that was outside of the Roman Empire was actually pretty safe. The things that were under Islam was okay. For example, the icon that we mentioned here at the St. Catherine's uh, Monastery, that fell out of the realm, the realm of the Roman Empire. They, and that's one reason why they have some of the oldest surviving icons that predate the iconoclastic period that we have here in 726 to 815, which is very important. Again, outside of the Roman Empire, under really Muslim occupation. And the one icon, again, it's in the altar. Um, it's covered by the screen, so I'm going to put it on the slide here because you can't see it. <laughs> so it's the icon of uh, Paniyep Latitera, which basically means the Virgin Mary that's wider than the heavens. Um, it also incorporates uh, the prophecy of Isaiah, if you hear here. So that's what I have. Um, as you see with iconography, you go, you, you have a message. And what I try to explain with my presentation that you have messages that are trying to get out. And the best way to get it out is with images. At least this is what sustained the early church by having the icons. That's why with the Orthodox Church, we still have them. Um, from the limitations of the languages, of the Greek, of the manuscripts and everything else that was mentioned, 
this is the best way to go in getting the word out, the message out of uh, God. And also, in a way, to show that we're called to be saints too because we have the saints, we can depict them because they are us, right? They're not created any differently than us. They're sinners like ourselves. Um, and it, that's another way, going back to what I said earlier about aids and worship, it kind of helps us to focus, saying, if they can do it, then we can do it too. So thank you again. I think I said it up there. All right. Uh, we're going to transition now. First of all, this will be available for you to see afterwards. We're going to turn these lights down because uh, we're televising this, and it's playing a little bit of a heck with the... Uh, TV. Plus, we don't want to blind everybody. Okay. Um, Kendall Trejo is going to uh, come up. She's going to do a little narrative analysis of a couple icons. She's going to show you how the images are interpreted, what are the elements, and things you should look for, Christian symbols that mean something. So, Kendall, why don't you go ahead and I, unlike these two, do not publicly speak ever, so I have no heard you can say forget anything. So, <laughs> But how we're going to start is just some popular icons you can find in many of the churches. So starting off is how you would read icons and what iconography is. So how you read icons is by starting in the center, so the left here, and use some examples. You start in the center. Right here, right here, you can obviously tell that those are Jesus Christ, and you go on and expand outward. So from here, then you go to the book, figure out what that says. Over here, you go to who he would be, and then like that, and then take a story from that. Excuse me, could you talk a little louder? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You want to use the mic? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How are you guys? Now. 